Today we'll be going through how to manually handle a newborn baby. Hi, I'm Denny and this is Practical Mommy Loves Luxury. Welcome to my series of videos for new or expecting parents. Firstly, congratulations on your new one. It is a truly exciting time, but it can be extremely intimidating when it comes to handling them because they're so little, they're so precious, and of course you don't want to hurt them. I'll be covering some very important don'ts or what not to do. And then I'll be going through how to handle a baby in very common everyday activities like carrying, bathing, changing, burping, with some of my practical tips thrown in. Starting with the things to be aware of. Babies have things called fontanelles that we need to be careful with. Our skull consists of five separate bones that eventually fuse together. Before these bones fuse together, we have two fontanelles, one in the front and one in the back. We need to be careful of fontanelles because technically the baby's brain is underneath, not covered by any bone. There's a small fontanelle at the back and that often fuses really early, usually within the first to two months of birth. Sometimes this fontanelle is already fused at birth. And then there's a bigger one up the front, which tends to fuse in the first two years of life. To find the front fontanelle, trace a line from the front of your baby's ears to the top of their head and another line from the middle of your baby's nose up towards the middle of the head. And where these lines cross, you'd be able to find the baby's fontanelle. If you touch the baby's head here, you will find that there is a depression in the baby's skull. And if you look really closely, you'll also notice a pulsation. So be super careful with this area if you're washing their hair or if you're stroking their head. The next thing I want to talk about is shaken baby syndrome. So it is very important not to shake the baby. When a baby is shaken, their head gets thrown forward and backwards. This sort of whipping action can cause the blood vessels in the baby's brain to tear. This in turn causes bleeding in the brain and brain damage. This could result in mental retardation, seizures, blindness and even death. In Australia, when an injury like this is inflicted upon a baby, it is considered a crime. And sometimes the saddest thing you hear is that the person who inflicted the injury was not even aware that an injury like this could happen to a baby. And let's face it, a newborn baby can really rile us up. They can push our buttons and they can really test our patience. And the general advice is if a baby is getting you really agitated and you're feeling your blood starting to boil, put your baby down in a safe place walk off and only come back once you've completely cooled down. They're certainly much safer for everyone. Now moving on to handling the baby. The first thing I'll talk about is picking up the baby. It's very important to make sure that the head and neck are supported. While the baby is lying on their back, you can rotate them by gently grabbing one shoulder and sliding your hand underneath their neck and their head. After that, you would use your other arm to support their bottom, you will pick them up and bring them to your chest. You can put them in shoulder hold by leaning their head against your shoulder. Otherwise, there's also cradle hold where you slide your arm underneath their back and support their head and neck in the crook of your arm. And then there's also belly hold where you turn the baby around so that their bellies are facing the floor and their backs are facing the sky. This applies a little bit of pressure on their belly and sometimes it can help when they're a little bit colicky or a little bit gassy. And the next hold is a lap hold, and that's when you use your lap to help support the weight of the baby. You can often do this with other children who want to hold your baby. In all honesty, when I was carrying my baby, I sat down a lot because I was worried about dropping her. The next activity is bathing. And this one is a little bit trickier because you are dealing with a slippery baby, and potentially you could also be walking over a slippery floor. For bathing, I think the setup is most important. This would include setting up a towel on a surface where you're going to place the baby after the bath is done. In my opinion, the easiest place to bathe the baby is at a sink, whether it be your kitchen sink or your laundry sink. And this is coming from someone who did have a bathtub and a bath support. I would not recommend a bath support because it limits my ability to wash the baby's back. For baby shampoo and baby soap, I would suggest that you use bottles with plunger functions because that's easier to deal with compared to shampoo and soap bottles that have lids. Also have a cup or a bowl or some sort of scoop available so you can scoop water. Have some facial cotton wool or a face towel to wipe your baby's face with. In the bath area, you might want to make sure you lay down a number of floor mats as well to absorb any water that you spill on the floor. 
Once the bath area is all ready, plug the sink, turn on the tap, and you can test the temperature of the water using your elbows. Now that the setup is ready, the first thing I would do is to wash the baby's hair and face. And at this point, she still has her clothes on, and this is particularly helpful if you live in a cold climate. So you can rest the baby's bottom against the edge of the sink. And to support the baby's upper body, head and neck, you would loop your arm around the back of the baby and grab one shoulder. And then lean the baby over the sink, scoop up some water to get her hair wet, one pump of shampoo, wash her hair, and then rinse the shampoo off. And then I would grab the facial cotton wool or the face towel that you had set up earlier on. I would wet that, squeeze out the excess fluid, and give the baby's face a wipe. You can also wrap your finger around the cotton wool or the face towel and gently wipe the insides of their mouth. Once I've washed her face and hair, I would then proceed to take her clothes and her nappy off. And in the same way that we held the baby before, I would put the baby into the water. Bear in mind, during this whole time, you don't let go of the baby's arm at all. And that's when the body shampoo bottle with the plunger function comes in really handy because you can operate that with just one hand. So in terms of bathing the baby, wash the obvious bits, the body, the legs, the arms, but also don't forget to get into their creases. For example, the creases of their neck, their armpits, uh, their elbow creases, and maybe some of their arm folds, their groins, and the backs of their knees. And when you're done, support the baby's bottom and pull them out of the sink. Walk over to the towel that you have set up earlier, and you can start to dry them there. At this point, just be careful because this is when the baby is wet and slippery. When the baby is a newborn and they cannot insist on staying in a bath like my daughter can now, the whole process should take less than 10 minutes. So once they finish their bath, they're wrapped in a towel. In my situation, I then carried my baby to the change table in her nursery. And then I will use the towel to dry her hair, her body, her arms and legs, but don't forget the creases of their neck again, their armpits, their elbow creases, any folds that you find, the crease underneath their belly, their groin, their bottom, the backs of their legs. And to keep my baby skin hydrated, I applied baby lotion from head to toe. So I've got a hack here to share with you. So at this point in time, the baby is lying on a towel. And personally, because I dressed my baby up in suits, it meant that now I would have to get a suit on. So instead of lifting my daughter off the change table, having to then carry her in one arm, grabbing the towel and hanging it up, and then grabbing a suit and having to lay it down. Instead, what I did was I left my baby on the change table, but I would roll her to one side and I would essentially try and shove the towel as far across as possible. And then I would grab her suit and similarly laid it out as, as best as I can underneath her. I would then roll her to the other side, pull out the towel and pull out the other half of the suit and voila, I didn't have to lift her during that whole process. And then I would apply some nappy cream, put on her nappy, and then get her dressed. The next activity is a nappy change. So I only use disposable nappies. What you will notice on newborn disposable nappies is that there's often a yellow line down the middle of the nappy. When the line is yellow, it indicates that the nappy is dry. It turns blue when the baby has done a wee. As I said before, I was a big fan of Wonder Suits and my daughter was living in Wonder Suits until she was ready to be toilet trained. The Wonder Suit has a two-way zip, which means that you can unzip the suit from the bottom and just get the legs out to get the nappy changed. So to change nappy, I would get her legs out. Before you undo that nappy, you can grab a clean nappy and place it underneath the dirty one. Subsequently, I would undo the nappy. If they've done a poo, I would try and grab as much poo with the dirty nappy and then fold the dirty nappy over itself so that there's a clean surface for your baby's bottom to rest on. To clean it, grab some baby wipes. For a girl, you need to wipe from front to back only because if you do it in reverse, there's a risk of the urethra becoming contaminated with feces, which would increase the risk of urinary tract infections. And as you're doing that, if it was a big poo explosion, you could then place the wet wipe underneath the baby's nappy as well. You can wrap all that wet wipes and throw it away in a bin. So once the baby's nappy area is clean, I would apply nappy cream and then put the nappy back on and dress the baby back up. The sensation of the skin being exposed to air can trigger the baby to wee. So if you've got a boy, they could potentially spray you. 
I'll be very careful you have a boy and I'll be trying to get another nappy on quite quickly. You might want to have a towel available just to place over them while you're looking away doing something else. Now I have to say I do feel that the change area can be set up in such a way so that you get maximal efficiency from it. So if you're interested in checking out an efficient change table setup, I'll leave a card up here that you can click on. The next thing is feeding and burping. I'm not going to talk about breastfeeding because that's a whole other video on its own. I'm referring to bottle feeding. So to feed your baby, you can hold your baby in cradle hold. Or if you're sitting down, you can rest their bottom on your lap and you can support their head and neck in one arm and feed them with the other. In this position, some people like to rest their babies on a pillow. If you notice that your baby is not sucking anymore, you can gently rotate the teat or just bend the bottles one way or the other to try and stimulate the sucking again. Sometimes if they stop sucking, it may be an indication that they've had enough to drink. And then to burp the baby, you can choose to put them in shoulder hold. If you're worried that the baby may vomit over your shoulder, you can place a towel or a muslin cloth over your shoulder and pat them on the back that way. Sometimes just even lifting the baby to a sitting position where they're leaning forward a little bit can be enough to induce a burp. Otherwise, in that position, you can still gently pat them on their back. In this position, still make sure that you support their head and neck from the front. The other thing that you can do with your baby is to cycle their legs. So you will move their legs in a way that simulates them cycling a bicycle. And sometimes this can help if the baby is feeling rather colicky or gassy. You can also gently massage their belly in a clockwise direction. So my next video is going to be on maintaining a family schedule to keep your sanity. So to make sure you don't miss out on that video, do subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and also click on that notification bell so that you get informed when that video becomes available. In the meantime, feel free to enjoy these videos over here. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please like and share. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye!